Today, we're diving into the Disney dining plan to answer the big question, is it worth it for you? But more importantly, how to crush it. Join us as we share our experience and reveal how we use the plan to its fullest, maximizing every meal and snack to get the most value out of our Disney vacation. From mouth-watering meals at top-tier restaurants to delectable snacks throughout the parks, we'll show you how we crushed the plan and made the most out of every dining opportunity. Whether you're a Disney newbie or a seasoned pro, you won't want to miss our tips and tricks for making the Disney dining plan work for you. Join us! You can purchase the dining plan when you stay on property, which means at one of the Walt Disney World hotels. There are two plans, the Disney dining plan and the quick service plan. For the Disney dining plan, for each night that you stay, you get credits for one table service, one quick service meal, and one snack. You also get a resort refillable mug, which gives you free refills at the resorts, but not in the parks. The quick service meal is similar, but you get two quick service meal credits per night instead of one table service at one quick service. For this video, we're going to focus on the main Disney dining plan. The cost you see is per person per night of your stay. Each meal includes a beverage, and if you're 21 or over, you can choose an alcoholic drink. All table service meals except breakfast also include a dessert. You can choose how to space out your credits and use them when you want. For example, you can save your snack credits and use two in one day if you'd like. Not all snacks around the park are included in the meal plan. You need to look for this symbol. You can use snack credits in the gift shop. This is especially useful if at the end of your vacation you still have snack credits left to spend. Each person over three on the reservation will be included in the plan and you have to purchase the plan for your full stay. So, if you have a family of four and you're staying five nights, you'll have to purchase it for all four people for all five nights. Tips are not included for table service, so you'll need to leave gratuity for your meals, except at Hoopty Doo and Cinderella's Royal Table. Fine dining restaurants require two table service credits. These include, but are not limited to, Cinderella's Royal Table, Akershus, Artist Point, be our guest and hoop to do review. Do not use your meal plan at these restaurants as the cost is not worth it to spend two credits there. You might think you can game the system if you pick up a large pizza from places like the All Star Resort and feed your family, but just know that a large pizza counts as two quick service credits. When you mobile order, it'll automatically apply your meal plan credits. Side items can sometimes count as a snack, such as cheese sauce. Be careful, don't pay for these with a meal credit. When you're mobile ordering on the app, you can select at the time of purchase if you're using the meal plan for each item or not, or you can tell the cast member when you're ordering. Don't waste your meal credit on a $1 cheese sauce, just pay for that separately. The plan is great if you have kids 9 or under. If you have kids over 9 but under 21, they get charged the adult price but cannot take advantage of the included alcoholic drinks and might not eat all the food. To make the plan worth it, you want your snacks to be at least $6, quick service meals at least $25, and table service meals at least $63. Character dining is a great place to use the table service credits. It is best to use your meal credits on lunch or dinner as it is more expensive than breakfast. For breakfast, we recommend either using a snack credit or bring your own breakfast. When ordering from table service or quick service, look for the most expensive items. For example, if you go to Teppanito, we recommend you order the steak and shrimp combination, which is $48. We stayed for three nights. We had two adults and two teens, which Disney considers adults. Here's how we maximized our credits. We picked up our resort refillable mugs, which would have cost $21.99 each, for a total of $87.96. The night we arrived, we used our first table service meal at 1900 Park Fair a character dining buffet in the Grand Floridian. We got two alcoholic drinks. The total cost of the meal would have been $328.64. It's a great place to use your credit because it's the most expensive restaurant that requires only one credit. Dinner alone was $67 per person. The next morning we went to Hollywood Studios and used a snack credit at Starbucks for breakfast. Starbucks is a great place to use a snack credit because you can buy the largest, most expensive drink with all the add-ons and it still costs just one snack credit. Our drink was $8.51. For lunch, we ate at Regal Eagle in Epcot. We used four counter service credits. We could have gotten two alcoholic drinks, one for each adult, but we only got one. The cost of that meal would have been 
We had dinner at Ohana in the Polynesian Hotel. We ordered two alcoholic drinks. The cost of the meal would have been $311.51. After dinner, we went to Magic Kingdom and used four snack credits to get ice cream from the snack carts, which would have cost $24.75. If we were not still full from dinner, a better choice would have been to use our credit at Plaza Ice Cream Parlor and gotten a sundae for $8.79. The next day, we went to Animal Kingdom. We used two snack credits to get a coffee and a giant cinnamon roll, which was shareable, from Starbucks. It cost $16.49. We had lunch at Satuli Canteen, which cost $88.58. For this meal, no one wanted alcohol. We got a pineapple lime drink instead. We got two snacks, a Dole Whip, and an ice cream sandwich, which cost $15. The ice cream sandwich was a great use as a snack credit from Dino Bites, as it cost $8.29, and it's also shareable. We then park hopped to Epcot and had dinner at Garden Grill, which is character dining. We got two alcoholic drinks, the best of our trip. If we had not done a dining plan, we almost would have certainly missed out on getting those drinks. The cost of the meal was $3.10.53. For dessert, we got three treats at the Germany Pavilion, but their machine wasn't working, so they gave us the snacks for free. We lucked out. The snacks would have cost $18. The next morning, we had breakfast at the Grand Floridian's Gasparilla Island Grill. Even though breakfast isn't the best use of a quick service meal, we had to leave for a flight, so we couldn't stay for lunch. The adults chose coffee, any specialty coffee counts, and our kids got juice. It cost $59.57. We had a few snack credits remaining, so we used them at the gift shop to get candy for the trip home, which cost $21.80. The total amount we would have spent if we didn't use the meal plan was $1,379.98. The meal plan cost $1,131.36, or a savings of $248.62. If the snack machine in Germany was working, we wouldn't have gotten the last snacks. So taking those out, our savings was $230.62. The Disney dining plan worked out well for us because we chose expensive sit-down restaurants, which we knew we wanted to go to before purchasing the dining plan. We ordered alcohol, and we got snacks that averaged over $6. It was a lot of food. It was great for a short trip, but for a longer trip, it would be hard to eat that much food every day. If not for the meal plan, we wouldn't have purchased the resort refillable mugs. We didn't use them much. We also wouldn't have ordered as much alcohol. But the meal plan provided us the opportunity to order expensive items and try new things that we might have been hesitant to do otherwise. Another advantage is that your food is all prepaid. You don't have to think about the cost when you order. You can go for the most expensive items and not worry about it. If you have any questions about the meal plan or how we used it, leave a comment down below. If you found this video useful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you can continue to come along with us on our adventures. We'll see you soon!